the twelfth lecture of this video lecture series on optical instrumentation. Uh, till now, we have uh, finished unit 1 and unit 2 of this course and today we shall start unit 3. In unit 3, uh, we shall discuss various instruments that are majorly used in laboratories, research institutes, colleges, research laboratories etcetera, etcetera. So, mainly interferometers we have to discuss, monochromators, spectrophotometers and these things we have to discuss uh, in this unit and interferometers uh, are basically based on interference effect. So, we shall start with interference. Okay. So, these are the topics, interference then what is an interferometer, two kind of interferometers are there in this uh, we have in our syllabus. In this uh, we shall discuss Michelson interferometer and the applications of Michelson interferometer. So, what is interference? We all uh, know what is interference, this we have studied in our school. So, it is a phenomena in which two light waves superimpose with each other if they are traveling in a same medium two waves superimpose with each other and form a pattern of bright and dark fringes. The pattern is called a uh, fringe pattern. Okay. So, what is the principle of superposition? If, if two waves, two or more propagating waves of the same type are propagating in a medium are incident on the same point. states that when two or more propagating waves of the same type are incident on the same point, the resulting amplitude at that point is equal to the vector sum is equal to the vector sum of the amplitude of individual waves. So, if two or more waves are coming at the same point, then the resultant will be the vector sum of all the waves. Okay, this is the super uh, principle of superposition of waves. So, if let us consider this is a, a electromagnetic wave, okay, we know the electromagnetic field vibrate like this in the medium in unit number 1 we have seen this in light theory. So, this is electromagnetic wave and uh, uh, these are the two electromagnetic waves that are traveling in the same medium and they superimpose with each other. If the crust of a wave meets with crust of another wave like this and of the same frequency and if trough of one wave collides with superimposed with trough of another wave, then the amplitudes will be added and this will be the resultant wave we get. So, the amplitude is double addition of these two waves. Then the amplitude is the sum of individual amplitude, this is called constructive interference. This is called constructive interference. If positive superimposes with positive, if negative superimposes with negative or crust trough. Okay. So, they get added up and the amplitude of the resultant wave will be double and this is called constructive interference and due to constructive interference, we get bright fringes. We all know Young's double slit experiment, we have studied in our 10 plus 2 classes. Similarly, if crust falls on trough and trough falls on crust, then it cancel out each other positive negative, positive negative and we do not get any light and we get a dark fringe. From constructive interference, we get bright fringe, from destructive interference, we get dark fringe. Okay. So, to observe the interference pattern, first condition is we need coherent sources we need two coherent sources, light rays, two light rays from two highly coherent sources. Now, it is impossible to get uh, 100 percent coherent light from two different sources. So, what is done? A single source is used to generate two sources and slits are used as we used in Young's double slit experiment. So, this is the diagram for Young's double slit experiment, this is single slit. Now, slit 1, slit 2, so these are two coherent sources, they are 
at same distance from slit 1 and due to this over here this is constructive interference maximum brightness over here and destructive interference no brightness. So, this is a interference pattern bright dark bright dark ok. This is 0th maxima maximum brightness then first principle second principle maxima like this. So, interference effect can be observed with all types of waves for example, light waves, radio waves, acoustic waves, surface water waves, gravity waves or matter waves. So, all type of waves undergo superposition, uh, uh, superimposition. So, interference effect can also be seen in all types of waves. Now, what are interferometers? Instruments based on the principle of in interference of light, they are known as interferometers. What, are, what is the use of these instruments? They are used to determine wavelength of uh, a light source, unknown wavelength of monochromatic light source. Also, resolution of spectral lines, if we have, uh, if we have two different wavelengths of light, we can find out the distance of these two lines, we can find out, we can resolve these two lines. If we have a transparent plate, thin transparent plate, we can find out the refractive index of that trans plate. If we know the refractive index, we can find out the thickness of thin transparent plate. Also, we can use interferometers to standardize other meters. So, a standardization of a meter. There are various different interferometers, we have to discuss these two, Michelson interferometer and fabry parrot interferometer. Today in this lecture, we shall discuss Michelson interferometer, ok. So, this is the arrangement of Michelson interferometer. Over here, there is a coherent light source, mainly lasers are used and this is a thin beam splitter. This is a, a thin transparent sheet of glass, 50 percent uh, reflecting, 50 percent trans, uh, transmitting, partly silvered. So, 50 percent light will be transmit uh, reflected and it will go in this direction, 50 percent li light will be transmitted and will it will go in this direction. So, we have created two rays, this is mirror 1 and this is mirror 2. So, when these two rays uh, uh, fall on these mirror, they come back reflected back and over here they interfere with each other. And on this photo detector or screen, we get interference pattern. So, interference pattern that we get in Michelson interferometer is circular like this, over here you can see these two examples of interference pattern. Now, out of these two mirrors, one mirror is movable and one mirror is fixed. So, what happens if these two mirrors are exact are at exactly same distance from this point, then there is no path difference between this ray and this ray and we get bright fringe in the center, we get bright fringe in the center. But if we move this mirror by a distance lambda by 2, if we move this mirror by a distance lambda by 2, a path difference of lambda is created. Why? Because uh, lambda by 2 distance for going in this direction and lambda by 2 distance while coming back. So, total path difference that is created between this ray and this ray is lambda. And due to this, we see a fringe shift in this pattern. In this pattern, if we move a mirror, the fringes are shifted okay. and we can count these fringe shift. There is a very small uh, screw gauge is connected with a vernier scale on this and we can very slowly move these mirrors with the help of this screw gauge and we can read the distance by how much distance we have moved this mirror and we can count the number of fringes n. Okay. And by counting these number of fringes, we can find out a relation that is 
d is equal to n lambda by 2. So, if number of frame shift is 1, it means we have moved the mirror by lambda by 2 distance. So, that is why d, d what is d? By how much distance we have moved this mirror? So, d is equal to n lambda by 2. If we see 2 frame shifts, it means we have moved the mirror by a distance lambda. Okay. So, this is a relation between the uh, distance by which mirror is moved and wavelength and number of fringe shift for Michelson interferometer. Okay. Now, this relation and few more relations are there, they are used in various applications. So, applications of interferometer we have already discussed. So, first application is to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light. Suppose, we have a uh, source of monochromatic light and we not, do not know the wavelength of that light. So, we can use this Michelson interferometer, how? Mirror M1 and M2 are adjusted so that circular fringes are visible in the field of view. Okay. So, that circular fringes are visible on the detector on the screen anywhere. Now, one mirror is kept fixed and another mirror is moved with the help of micrometer screw, screw gauge, vernier caliper. Okay. The number of fringes that cross the field of view are counted. So, what we do? As we move that, we count the number of fringes that are moving. Okay. You can see the video on YouTube, various videos are available in for Michelson interferometer and you can see that how uh, fringe pattern is moved. Okay. So, suppose the wavelength of monochromatic light is lambda, the distance uh, by which the mirror is moved is d and the number of fringes that cross the center of the field of view is n. Then we have derived this relation d is equal to n lambda by 2. Okay. So, if we uh, if one fringe shift is counted, it means mirror is moved by lambda by 2 distance. Okay. If two fringe shift is counted, it means mirror is moved by lambda distance. Okay. And we can very easily find out lambda, uh, lambda is equal to Okay, we can very easily find out lambda using this formula wavelength of monochromatic light. Now, this is a problem for this. In moving one mirror in a Michelson interferometer through a distance of 0.1474 mm, 500 fringes cross the center of the field of view what is the wavelength of light. So, what is given? D is given. D is 0 0.1474 millimeter. Another small n number of fringes 500 and what we have to find out? We have to find out lambda. So, we know d is equal to n lambda by 2 lambda is equal to we can simply very simple problem this is we can simply put the values of d and n so what is this so this is you will get Okay. Angstrom. This is the wavelength of monochromatic light, unknown wavelength. Over here, you can see the solution. Fringes, 
distance is converted into centimeter. So, this is over here and lambda by 2, 2 into distance upon fringes 10 to the power minus 8 centimeters that is angstrom 5896 angstrom. Okay. Second application, first application to determine the unknown wavelength of light, what is second application? Resolution of the spectral lines, what is the distance between two wavelengths of light? Determination of the difference in the wavelength between two neighboring spectral lines. There are sources, there are lasers that emit photons, that emit radiations uh, of wavelength that are very close to each other. So, we have to find out the distance between them. Sometimes we have to find out wa one wavelength is known, sometimes you have to find out another wavelength. Suppose lambda 1 and lambda 2 in any light beam are very close to each other, these are two wavelengths. Okay. Then distance between two consecutive positions of the maximum distinctness of the fringes, what is d? So, 2 d is equal to lambda 1 into lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 minus lambda 2. Okay. So, we shall use this formula to solve this problem, calculate the distance through which mirror of the Michelson interferometer as to be displaced between two consecutive positions of maximum distinctness d1 and d2, lines of sodium, d1 line wavelength of d1 line is this, wavelength of d2 line is this. So, we have to find out d, so we know 2d is equal to lambda 1, lambda 2 lambda 1 minus lambda 2. What is lambda 1? Over here given lambda 1 is 5896 angstrom and lambda 2 is 5890 angstrom. Okay. We can simply substitute these values and Okay. By solving this, we can get the value of d. Let us see how much it is over here. We have substituted these values. This is the value that we got in the previous slide and this is equal to 0.2894 millimeters. 0.2894 millimeter is the distance between distinctness between the uh, two wavelengths of light. Okay. So, this was second application of Michelson interferometer. Let us move to third and fourth application of Michelson interferometer that is determination of refractive index and thickness of thin transparent plate. Okay. So, let me explain you how it is done using this diagram. So, a transparent plate of either unknown thickness or unknown refractive index is inserted in one of these two arms. It is inserted in one of these two arms, let us suppose it is inserted over here. So, what happens when a glass plate is inserted, then the path, there is a path difference between these two rays, right? Due to this glass plate of T thickness, let us say the thickness is T. 
So, this light ray has to travel two times through this thickness T. So, there is a path difference. Path difference, how much path difference is there? We have to find out. And due to this path difference, there is some shift in the fringes that we observe in the output in the interference pattern. And this fringe shift that is observed, number of fringes are counted. And as the number of fringes are counted, we can find out the refractive index of this thin transparent plate if thickness is known and the wavelength of light that is used in this instrument is known. Okay. And if refractive index is known, we can find out the thickness of that plate. Okay. So, we must know one thing either refractive index or thickness. Okay. So, what happens due to this T thickness, there is a path difference. How much path difference? Due to two times light ray has to travel inside this plate. Now, let us suppose that the refractive index of this plate is mu. This is thickness. this is refractive index. So, when this plate was not here, when this transparent plate was not here, light ray was travelling through air and the refractive index of air is we consider unity. Refractive index of air, how much? We take it as 1. So, now in place of air, we have kept this transparent plate of refractive index mu. We have kept this transparent plate of refractive index mu. So, due to this, how much is the difference in the refractive index? Mu minus 1 and this is multiplied by 2. Okay. So, mu minus 1 is the difference in the refractive index that is over here because we uh, moved air and we kept a, a thin transparent plate and 2 t. This is the total path difference. This is the total path difference that is there due to this thin transparent plate 2 mu minus 1 into t 2 mu minus 1 into t and this we use for finding the either refractive index or thickness over here. So, path difference that is introduced by thin transparent plate 2 mu minus 1 into t and this is equal to n into lambda, n into lambda. If one fringe shift is there, it means this path difference is equal to lambda. If two fringe shift is there, then total path difference that is inserted due to this thin transparent plate is equal to 2 lambda. Okay. Similarly, if for example, 100 fringes are shifted from the field of view. So, total path difference is 100 lambda. That is why 100 fringes are shifted. If 50 fringes shift, it means total path difference is 50. Okay. And this total path difference is equal to 2 mu minus 1 into t because mu is the refractive index of thin transparent plate, 1 is the refractive index of air. So, in place of air, we earlier light was traveling through air, now it was it, it is traveling through mu refractive index. So, total difference is mu minus 1 into t and 2 times it is traveling, 
so 2 mu minus 1 into t. So, this formula is used to either find out t or to find out mu, one should be known. T is thickness of transparent plate and mu is refractive index of transparent plate, lambda is wavelength of light use and n is number of frame shifts. Okay. So, in next lecture, we shall discuss uh, problems uh, for this uh, application of Michelson interferometer. Thank you.